now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, this is Alex and this is the Ramble. Yeah, we go until midnight tonight from New York, New York. Ladies and gentlemen, there in Florida, the state that of course has given us so many immigrants here in uh, New York. <laughs> Because they keep sending them up, and I don't know why we don't sue DeSantis. Anyway, <laughs> is Lori Thompson, who is down there in Florida. She's usually outside, but not today because... Because the temperature in, was in the 40s. And whenever the Fahrenheit begins with a 4, I move the action inside. Yeah. Because, wow. Yeah. And what's our temperature yeah. today? Well, it, my temperature here is 40. About 40. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So people have, uh, you know, because we're Florida, first yeah. of all, most people have no conception of Florida's layout. You know, the, the panhandle, we have, it gets down to 30, and we do have very occasional snow here, but it doesn't stick at is all. It, is it warmer down in the, uh, down towards the bottom of the penis? Yes, your, um, your beloved Miami is much better. Mm -hmm. And Fort Lauderdale, that's where we're going to be, in fact. We're going on a cruise of some islands, and uh, so it leaves from Fort Lauderdale. You're going on a cruise that leaves from Fort Lauderdale. How long is that cruise? This is just an eight-day. This is just a kind of just a, winter. Just uh, 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 eight-day little, yeah. little cruise. Winter bop. Aren't you getting tired of being on boats? You know, I like it. I think people are acclimated from birth almost to water or land, and I've always enjoyed being on the water. So I keep hitting my microphone here. Yeah. <laughs> what has it done to you? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, yeah, I should beat up by my microphone for all it's done for me for these years. Anyway, uh, uh, yeah, well, I, um, uh, you know, Marjorie, you're, you're we've talked spouse. about this before. Uh, we're going to come into some kind of money, and we're thinking about doing a lot of traveling. All right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and um, and I hope we get the money before I drop dead, so I can do the traveling. <laughs> that would be beneficial. And yeah. every day, like today, I have a. I'm slightly feeling slightly hoarse. Every day, it's uh -huh. it's, it's something. It's either my leg, or it's, uh, but it's nothing that's going to kill me. Right. It's just going to annoy you. Until you finally but take I, a laugh. I'm waiting for that day where I get a, a, a real bad backache. And so I decide to go to the doctor for it, and he checks it out, and he says, oh, it's cancer. Yeah. <laughs> you know, well, I mean, <laughs> what do you mean? What is back cancer? What is that? You know? Yeah, I know. And there is something called cancer of the fat. I don't know the medical term for it, but mm -hmm. Julia Sweeney did a big bit on it. Wouldn't it be nice if you could get cancer of the fat? People... Yeah. Or, you know, now people just take Ozempic. They don't care. <laughs> they just take Ozempic and they think, well, if there's an e easy way to lose weight, they'll try it, you know? Yeah. yeah. A friend of mine used to threaten to buy the world's shortest weight loss book. Yeah. Eat less, move more. <laughs> That's it. Let me see here. I want to change the background here because it's daytime where she is, but yes. it's nighttime where I am, and that doesn't yes. work, so... There we go. You are. What a magician. Isn't that amazing? amazing. Pure magic. Pure, yeah. utter magic. <laughs> ah, now I feel, I feel more awake now. <laughs> and you're wearing a shirt yeah. that says body. But Marjorie, Marjorie just doesn't like the idea of, of one of these boats with like 3,000 people on it. See, and that's. And a Ferris me. wheel. And a Ferris wheel. Right. Yeah. yeah. And a water, water slides. And now those are Margaritaville cruises have all those amenities because they're aimed at families. Disney cruises have those kind of things. Amusement parks. Well, there features. are cruises that say no kids, right? Well, I don't know that it's printed out like that, um, but for legal reasons. But yeah, 
the uh, I Avenue saw era. I saw one that said no fucking kids. Uh-huh. <laughs> See, they cut right to the chase. See, I, but, I, don't, I wouldn't want to go on a cruise with kids. I'm sorry. Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, and I, I like children, and I'm glad that you were able to procreate, but leave me the hell alone. <laughs> you know? Yeah, well, it's just the aim is different. You know, the whole mission of the cruise, if you have a lot of children, is completely different. The whole, everything is designed. Then you go on a Disney cruise. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's, you know what you're getting in for. But uh, some princess cruises are the same way. Princesses uh, and celebrity are a little too Vegasy for me, you know, with the shows and. I don't that, want any of that. I just well, I, take me somewhere and show me some place, you know. Yeah. I don't want to go and see some guy do a bad version of Oklahoma, you know. That, yeah, the, which is or Cirque du Soleil or you know any of that. The Blue Man. They don't do Blue Man groups. I guess that would be too much commitment. But I don't like that stuff. And so yeah. Azamara doesn't have that stuff. Which one? That's a, Azamara Cruises. Azamara. That's our favorite. Yeah, and they're small. Like Marjorie would like this one. They're usually 800 or less and and well, much less. The smallest one I ever heard of was my friend Shecky went to Antarctica. Yeah. And the boat that went down there only held like maybe 100 people tops. Wow. So yeah. that one... Yeah, it yeah, was an expensive. Oh. It was expensive. It cost him like thirty thousand dollars. Yeah, but he no got cost. to see the penguins. <laughs> yeah, but he also had to smell the penguins. Yeah, well, food. that's I told you the story. The big uh, he died recent uh, last year. I say recently. It's not so recent anymore. But uh, the b- best piece of advice he left me with was, "Don't go to Antarctica. There's nothing worse than the smell of penguin shit." <laughs> a good reason he to says, avoid. Can you imagine? He says, "Can you imagine tens of thousands of penguins who go to the bathroom about every five minutes?" Yeah, and so it's rotten fish everywhere. Oh yeah, it's also rotting fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's and, the worst yeah. kind. And cold doesn't appeal to me at all. I'll tell you that. the worst smell. Do you remember somebody one day brought in an iguana, a big huge iguana, or something like that, or? A, might have yeah. even been what do they call them um, bigger than an iguana, but it was a huge thing, right? And yeah. they bring it in and put it on the table in the studio, and all of a sudden, he decides to take a dump. <laughs> I'm telling you, and I'm not kidding. Do you remember it? I don't. I don't know. It I was the worst smell. I've ever smelled in my life. I mean, I don't, most things don't make me gag. I was starting to gag. This smell, I'll rem- I remember it now as I'm talking about it. <laughs> You're haunted by his memory. Yeah. Yeah, because those, well, we went to uh, Costa Rica, who was part of a cruise, and we went on a train through a banana plantation, which was really cool because you saw wildlife, you wouldn't see it. Like the sloths, from the time they eat something, to the time it evacuates them, yeah. uh, it's 30 days. So can you imagine how something smells after 30 days? Well, is it that they don't dump more than once every 30 days, or they just have very bad cases of constipation? Well, I, I think it's just their metabolism is so slow. Sloths don't do anything. Sloths are know? very slow. You know, yeah. I often, if I come back as something, I think I'd want to come back as a sloth because they really have no sense of urgency. Right, no pressure at all. You know, it's like, I'm going to go over to that twig over there. Okay, let's start to go over to the twig. And about yeah. a year later, you're over at the other twig. You know, they live exactly. a very <laughs> casual life. It's no pressure at all. In fact, they don't care about fitness. You know, I go to yoga and Pilates classes, never seen a sloth. They don't care. They just don't care about anything. Mm-hmm. And that's, you know, that's a certain kind of bliss. I'm actually. just trying to think, is there anywhere in the world I would like to go that I've that always wanted to go? Mm-hmm. And I have a couple of them. But one of them I can't even go to now. Impossible. Why? Russia, Russia, Moscow. I always wanted to go to Moscow, 
and see you know the the the, the you know the uh, what do you call it, Red Square and all of that. Yeah, yeah. It was one of the places I've always wanted to go, but you can't go there now as an American, right? Because you're well, not allowed all- you're not allowed to do business with them. See, so if you go over there as a tourist, you're doing business with them. Right. Yeah. You're so. transacting. In fact, and, I, w- um, I was told this by my friend who is Russian. She is from Russia. And she, things are so bad now, she is going to be getting married and she can't invite her mother to the wedding because his mother is in Russia and she can't leave. Wow. Yeah. Now, what if you're an American there when the conflict like breaks out, like the Ukrainian Russian one? Mm-hmm. Um, what if you're there? Does the um, do ambassadors come and escort you home? Or I think they you? probably kick you out of the country. Oh, okay. You know, so you I, I don't think they'd arrest you, but they, you know, sometimes they arrest you if they need somebody to hold against the United Arguably. States who's holding somebody else, right? Leverage. So they go yeah. out and they get a journalist or somebody like that, and then accuse them of uh, um, um, spying against them. Misuse yeah. of a semicolon. It's called yeah. reporting, you assholes. <laughs> yeah, I wondered about that. Of conflicts that break out while you're abroad. Yeah. Because I have a friend, who, this older guy, who was very eccentric in Bloomington. And his name was Justice. And he was in Europe when um, the World War II broke out. Wow. So it was, yeah. And uh, he had to go down to the embassy, and he was with his five children. And they had to get out and get out. Where fast. were they, though? They were in Germany, I believe. Well, they were in Germany. Then, yeah, they might have been someplace less, less uh, at the center of the action. But I think it was Germany. No, no, no. It was France. I take it back. It's well, France. France was easier, you know. Yeah. I mean, um, but France was pretty much taken over by the Germans for a short time. Huh. Yeah, occupation, man. You that know, would be a tr- There's that famous yeah. shot of Hitler standing in front of the Eiffel Tower looking at it. Yeah. Which many had to come I, from Germany to go to the Eiffel Tower to do that, but I guess he wanted to see his newly acquired property. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to see the new acreage. Yeah. But France, did you mean, is going to outlaw smoking in most like public beaches, uh, near buildings, near schools. They're just outlawing it. They're going to put restrictions on vapes as well, starting next year. Now I don't smoke, so it doesn't, you know, it doesn't affect me. But I always look at. But now, when when places ban vaping, does that include the vapes that hold marijuana, or just vaping cigarettes? I think just the vape devices and whatever they're capable of. Oh, really? Because I use one every night to go to sleep. I have a little vape, a pot. And I, yeah. you know, and I go to sleep. It's very convenient. Is it, it you know, I don't have to roll a joint or then try to light the joint. It's just stu- a stub now, you know. Yeah. And do that. I mean, it, it's become so convenient. I mean, it's not like regular pot. It does. It has somewhat of the taste of pot, but not the same. But I'm not using it for that reason. I'm not using it to get high or to be social. Yeah. Is it CBD oil? Hmm. Is it CBD oil? No, no, it's it's marijuana. It's, it, oh, it, it's okay. a, a oil made out of marijuana that they put oh, okay. in this little uh, this little capsule, and it mm-hmm. goes into the vape magnetically. Yeah, I live with someone who vapes who has like five vapes. You know, one for leisure, one for <laughs> sneaking out of the country. I don't know what. They're in other all words, for. you married a pothead. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. No, he doesn't smoke pot. He's, uh, he was a cigarette smoker, very polite one. Oh. I don't remember him smoking more than five cigarettes a day, and he would always go outside. But he vapes constantly. So I think he's probably taking in more nicotine than See, while he I smoked. don't know. I don't know if vaping causes cancer like smoking cigarettes does. Right. Because what you're take- ingesting is a... Uh, that uh, 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 what's coming out the other end is like liquid or something. I when you when you f- exhale, but you vaped. It's not the same as uh, if you s- smoked a cigarette. You know, and it clings because, to your lungs. Well, yeah. it goes to your lungs too, but it, they're not the same kind of carcinogen. But I don't know. 
That's mm-hmm. what I'm questioning. I mean, like they say, well, pot will never cause you to get cancer. I don't know. I really nope. don't know. I don't think anybody knows at this point. Wouldn't you love to be uh, 300 years in the future so that you would look back on the time we're living now and see what turned out well, to be Well, 300 years in the future, they'll find that smoking was good for you. Yeah, yeah, or something <laughs> yeah. of that ill. That, in fact, yeah. it prevented a whole raft of other diseases. So yeah. if you're willing to trade that in for cancer, what the hell, you know? Exactly. Yeah, because I think of that often, how I would love to see how this era in which we live is going to be viewed kept, by Okay, so future. it's 200 years in the future. Lori and mm-hmm. Alex have had their bodies frozen <laughs> so they can be awakened 200 years in the future. What, what are we coming back to? Oh, oh, yeah, that would be interesting. The, uh, you know, the acclimating, you mean? Because it, be, it would be a whole new life that you're coming back well, to. Well, I mean, we're, you, to begin with, you would have a lot of stuff you would didn't know how to operate. Exactly, right okay. off the bat. So there, that would that would probably erode your confidence a okay. little bit. Because well, we I, I have one theory. I have one theory. If I came back 200 years from now, I'd wake up and this wouldn't be a democracy anymore. Oh, yeah, it's a plutocracy now. Isn't it? I mean, it's well, I mean, it's still an illusionary democracy. We believe yeah. we are a democracy. But mm-hmm. I, in the future, I think that we will have completely eradicated the democracy in this country. Oh, yeah. That it's probably yeah. going to wind up being a dictatorship. Yeah, we won't even go through the ruses anymore, like voting, polling place. What's that? Is that an indie band? Yeah. 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 I mean, I, 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 I see it because it's not so much Trump okay Mm -hmm. as it is what trump is able to do if he's elected president again and it's the people who are going to elect him so it's the people who will turn this thing away from democracy and towards really basically a dictatorship yeah i think so and what do you um what's your take on nikki haley what brothers nikki haley nikki haley well i don't like her because she's a republican uh, right. I think I think of all the people running for president, she's the most reasonable. Okay, yes. if she became president, I could live with it. I wouldn't mm-hmm. agree to everything she did, but I could right. live with it. You know, but the Koch brothers—that was a surprise endorsement, and she's she seems to be the well, one they hate, that's they hate Trump. Okay, the, yeah, the Koch yeah, brothers. which is you know to yeah. their credit <laughs> yeah uh, but Nikki Haley is I mean I wouldn't necessarily want to see her president I mean the question is of all these people do they have the qualifications and nobody asks mm-hmm. that question anymore they certainly didn't That's ask true. it of Trump you know mm-hmm. they said, yeah he was you know what because this country worships wealth and celebrity and Trump had both in his pocket that's what got him elected. And, and the elect- fact is that that's not what you want to elect to be president. What you want to elect to be president, and I often said, the people who make the best presidents are uh, governors because they run their state as a, a, a microcosm of what running the United States would be. You still have right. to deal with budgets. You have to deal with this. You have to deal with that. You know, Whereas if you're a senator, you don't have to deal with anything. You just have to get legislation passed. So senators and and congressmen make the worst of presidents, although Obama turned out to be okay. Mm -hmm. But he did bring somebody in like Joe Biden who who knew the, you know, the lay of the land to help him. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, and the other, yeah, the uh, the other aspect is uh, governor, governorships are internships for the presidency when you think about it because they have to do all the things you mentioned. Exactly. And Nikki Haley, I believe, was the governor, wasn't she? She was, one of the Carolinas. Yeah. I believe, yeah. So she has the experience, you know. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, let me put it this way. I wouldn't vote for her. I wouldn't want her to be president. I will do everything I can to make sure she doesn't become president. But (laughs) if she becomes president, it's not like I'm going to wake up the next morning and say, oh, my God. I mean, (laughs) I still, I will never forget the night that Trump won. And I went into the bedroom where Marjorie was asleep, and I was getting ready to hop into bed with her. And she said, 
Oh, how did the election turn out? I said, Trump won. And she went, oh, my God. <laughs> I remember that. I just remember that. She, it was the one thing she just, what? You it, know. Was, it was just a shock. And, you, I mean, you went to bed. I was doing news for a right, right, right-wing Mississippi station at the time mm -hmm. who were so pro-Trump. They dripped Trump. And I went to bed not knowing who was the president, or because they just hadn't called it yet. Yeah. It was about nine o'clock, you know, the night of, and it was just a mind blower to me. Well, I, I said to Marjorie, the most misinformed thing I've ever said. I said, but don't worry. We, we, let's see what how he does. He might do okay. <laughs> you know, I mean. Uh, my feeling was this this democracy, this country, in spite of all its flaws, mm -hmm. can survive somebody like Donald Trump. Well, I don't think I, I don't think it can in a second term. If he wins again, I mean, I've seen a list of the things he says he wants to do, and it's all getting even. It's all get, see, he is a vendetta driven person. Yeah, and that's. Man, we put him in a second term, especially when there was a break. Yeah. You know, he was president, break. Now he's had a chance to make all those other enemies in the interim. Yep. So that's what scared. That's what frightens me the most about him is uh, his vindictiveness. There, yes, it's absolutely. <laughs> yeah. But he, I mean, I have a list here of things that he he wants to do, and he wants to like you know completely revamped the Justice Department with all his people in it, you know. Mm -hmm. it yeah, says. and those are just the ones he's telling us. But I want to know, see, I mean, okay, Donald, you're running for president. Would you please give a speech and tell us what you plan to do for the country? <laughs> Instead of hiding uh, I know you. I know you've that forgotten ball. that little small thing, but Detail. we'd like to know what you're going to do for us. <laughs> yeah. You know, not what you're going to yeah, do for yeah. you. Did you see the debate? I watched the debate between Newsom, Gavin Newsom, uh -huh. governor of California, and Ron DeSantis, governor of It was of funny. I didn't watch it when it was live, and then I went looking for it online in its entirety, mm -hmm. and I can't find it. Well, all they did was talk over each other. I could well, not that, watch it. Well, that was the fault. That was the fault of, uh, what's his name? The moderator, uh, uh, Hannity. Uh, Sean yeah. Hannity. Because the moderator is supposed to jump in and say, look, you know, the next one of you that does this, I'm going to uh, just hold it and let the other guys speak. The other thing they yeah. didn't do is they could say to them, when the other person is talking, we're going to cut your mic. Mm -hmm. What they did yeah. is they didn't cut the mics. Right. You have to enforce that because people won't do it. Even if their intentions are good, they will not volunteer. It's an impulse. So voluntarily, they can't. Who do you think won that debate? Who do I think won? Yeah. I just, to be honest, yeah. I uh, I stopped watching it after about 17 minutes because I just couldn't take the interruptions. I thought, I'll just read the synopsis. They just kept talking over each other. Yeah. It drove me that, Well, that was the fault of the moderator and the people who were running the show. They should have told yeah, me ahead I mean, of time, when somebody else is talking, we're going to have their mic on, we're going to turn your mic off, so don't even try to start talking. You know? Yeah, I, I deduced that it was a production uh, flaw. Well, because, because if you say to somebody, okay, our first question is this, blah, 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 what do you think, uh, Governor Newsom? And then he starts talking, and DeSantis starts interrupting him. Yeah. If DeSantis' it, mic was off, it wouldn't matter whether he was interrupting him or not. Exactly. Time, time people, time the candidates, you know, say you're going to have this much for this to answer, and then and then cut the mics because it was unwatchable i thought and yeah yeah you know, i usually don't don't like to read synopsis well, the, the small amount i did watch i think newsom held himself up pretty well in that situation he does he was a little more a little less reactionary i mean he had some sense of reserve you can put him up against anybody and he's so good looking and he has such he, charisma that they mm -hmm. can't win he, he could completely say nothing right and get away with it because he's Gavin right. Newsom. 
Yeah, and you know, I thought he did a good job. I mean, uh, I knew him socially when we were in California, mm -hmm. when we were in San Francisco, and he had a really good restaurant called Plump Jack. I mean, by good, I don't know about the food. I wouldn't rave about the food, but it was just a fun social thing because you never knew who you'd see there. By the way, and, I uh, just I just looked at our time here, and we are running out of time. Isn't that amazing? Dang it. Bingo. <laughs> Bingo, we did it. Bingo. <laughs> Terrific. Yeah. Oh, that's another thing about Florida, that you never have to worry about moving more than a block without an opportunity to stop for bingo. Well, then it's it'd be a good place for a sloth to move in. Yes. <laughs> that's what they call a callback in comedy, folks. But, um, <laughs> See you next time. Okay. Bye. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet. The Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Okay, that's Lori Thompson. Nobody better. I love her. I just love her. I, I love her to death. Um, and uh, we've, we've spent a lot of our life together, that woman and I. Um, you know, if I had a girlfriend or I had a wife or whatever, I spent more time in my life with Lori Thompson than with anybody else. I mean, I just, it's, it's amazing. And yet, uh, you know, we never had a relationship going. We knew that that was not a good idea because I, I thought of her too much as a, uh, as a uh, uh, what do you call it, a uh, partner. And uh, I, I would not ruin that by having any other kind of relationship going. So anyway, I, I, I love the woman dearly, you know. Uh, okay, it is time now to go to our... Oh, there are quite a few people waiting tonight, so good, good. Um, let me see here. I, I need to admit all, and here we go. And uh, I am going to... Um, let's see here. Okay, I'll just put them on now. Here. Okay, there we go. And there's uh, Tom Yamaguchi. Hello, Tom. Great to see you again tonight, boy. You know? You want to call back? Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, I, you were talking about uh, uh, cruise, cruise ships in the Antarctic? Yeah. Or Antarctica? Mm -hmm. um, I had some friends that went on a cruise ship to Antarctica, mm -hmm. and, Antarctica, and uh, their ship sank. Their ship sank? <laughs> remember? Do you remember the MV Explorer in 2007? Hit an iceberg and sank? I really don't remember. Oh, well, I had a couple of friends. Yeah, nobody died, fortunately, including my friends. But, yeah. Uh, it, was, uh, it was November of uh, 2007. Yeah, I guess and, you should, uh, really shouldn't go anywhere there are icebergs, should you? <laughs> you know, we should, have learned, we should have learned a great lesson from the Titanic more yeah. than anything else That's true. yeah anyway. anyway let me introduce uh, the other people here alan is here hello alan how are you i'm doing good uh, how you doing Alan? charlie is here brian hey guys. is here kevin is here and jeff is here so far so hello everybody how are you welcome to a uh, welcome to a uh, wednesday edition you know i'm getting so out of it now i've got to do something I, a moment ago, before I came on the air, I went, well, this is the Thursday program, right? And then I looked and it said Wednesday, and I went, damn it, I've got two more shows to do this week. You know, I mean, I, I just, uh, I, I, it, it's gotten to the point where because I don't have a job, I don't have that kind of, you know, when you have a job, you say, hey, it's Monday, i got to go to work. It's, oh, Jeff. Oh. <laughs> Charlie is here. Mm -hmm. is here. Jeff. Jeff. But, who, but who on the panel has a job? Je Jeff, just absolutely you. kill your... <laughs> what What was that all about? I, I, Alex, you said that because you don't have a job and blah, 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 blah. But who on the panel has a job? Tom, Tom has a job. Charlie okay. has half a job. Yeah, yeah, well, Charlie has half a job. Do you lose track of the days? Like what day this is? Like you woke up this morning and went, ah, I don't know what day it is. Charlie? Not me. Not no. you. Okay, well, you're a nuclear physicist. I don't know what day it is. You're an astrophysicist or whatever, so, yeah. yeah so. See, Alex, if you had football in your life, you'd know what day Sunday is. Yep. 
<laughs> yeah. Oh boy, gonna get that one, huh? Yeah. Well, no. Well, I know what Sunday is. That's the day sixty minutes is on, which goes on to uh, goes on like a half an hour late because of fucking football. <laughs> Not in the West Coast. I. That's wait, what gets wait, me wait. mad, though. Coast, Out yeah. here in New York, they never, you know, they they go, well, you know, we're going to do this, and we're going to, you know, here's the uh, time that 60 Minutes is going to go on, and, and they adapt to, to it. They say 7.30 instead of 7 o'clock, right? Because the football game will run to a certain time. It never runs to that certain time. It always runs over. One week, it was an hour and 15 minutes over. Okay? Yeah, it was overtime. Drag it over yeah, to, well, yeah. screw you and your overtime. I want my 60 minutes. Here's my suggestion of what CBS should do. They've got their own K, their own internet network. Put 60 minutes on there at the right time if we want to go watch it, and then put it on your lousy network whenever you want to put it on. Does that make sense? Well, the problem is a lot of football fans like 60 minutes too. So yeah. Well, that's wanna... great. That's wonderful. But they'll be able to watch it after football. But if I want to watch it at 7 o'clock, they should run it on like Paramount Plus at 7 o'clock for me. Or move you. football to Monday. Or just get rid of football all to... Oh, excuse me. I don't want to make anybody here cry. <laughs> I'm sorry. You're going to get demonetized. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, oh, as people know, I mean, I'm not... I'm not yeah. I'll tell you, I'm, I'm not that fond of, uh, of football. Yeah. Uh, I love baseball. I think base. I mean, I don't. I'm not a big. You know, I'm not a fan that I watch baseball continually, or I even can tell you who's run was in the World Series this year. But I like whenever I watch a game, I enjoy it. You know, and you know, one of the reasons is it's easy to understand. You know, I mean, the first time I ever saw baseball, I understood it, and I was like five years old at the time. You know, so I mean, whatever. The, don't get me started on football. <laughs> what do you think of the pitch clock? <laughs> well, I know about the, not I, to get them started. <laughs> Baseball. We have a certain amount of time to pit. You have a certain amount of time to throw your pitch, right? Right. Yeah. 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 Uh, I don't. I don't mind the pitch clock that much, but why do you know making the bases a little bit bigger and and all this stuff is like changing the game and. What, what, like, what, well, what about the bitch clock? That's when you're looking at your watch and going. And, and, and when you look at your watch and go, she's late again. That bitch. <laughs> oh. I don't like them putting the ghost runner uh, on extra innings. They they changed the game. They they shouldn't mess with the game. Well, you know the trouble with baseball was is baseball was a very slow game. Uh, and for years they kept it as a very slow game, and they just felt they had to speed it up a little bit. Uh, because uh, and so they did speed it up, uh, and in some ways that ruined the nature of the game. I like the fact that it was a very leisurely game, you know, and that you'd sit there and you'd have your beer and your, you know, your popcorn or hot dog or whatever, and be talking with your friends. And occasionally something would go on down on the field, and then it was back to talking with each <clears throat> other and having a nice time, and it looked very pastoral. Right. On the other hand, you got this game football, which everybody admits is absolutely hazardous and injurious to the player's health. There's no question mm -hmm. about it. I watch these guys take a fall. And they go, oh, he just broke his leg. Well, goodbye. And it's like, you know, I, one time I, I, somebody said they saw a bullfight. And uh, I think it was uh, 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 Lopez. Mar uh, who's the comedian? Uh, George Lopez. George Lopez. And he said to me, he was down in Tijuana, his parents took him down, and he said, hey, well, come on, we'll show you a, a bullfight, because you know, bullfighting is a tradition among those people down in Mexico. And it, it, he, the, the bull came out, and the guy came out, the toreador, and they started going back and forth, and every now and then, the picador would come along and then just stick some giant picks in the bull's back. Now, there's no way the bull is going to win this deal, okay? <laughs> there's just no way. Uh, but some kind of, sometimes, you know, there's, there's a freak accident or something where the Toreador, uh, the Matador, rather, uh, gets, uh, gets hurt, in which case the bull is going, I didn't mean to do that. I'm sorry, really. I didn't mean to do that. Uh, but uh, they put this bull through all this 
torture. And then finally, after it's all over, he's, he's dead and everybody's going, yay, Toro. You know, like they're cheering him now? Cheer him while he's alive. So he said that this one time he went with his father and this whole thing was happening and the bull actually gored the matador so bad that they couldn't continue with the, uh, with the, with the uh, uh, fight, with the bullfight. And so they took the bull and they took him, you know, they're all cheering as they're leading the bull out of the ring. Uh, and uh, they're going, yay, Toro, yes, viva la Toro, ah, yeah, yeah, Toro, Toro, Toro. And as soon as he got outside of the ring, all of a sudden you hear a shotgun go off. <laughs> I don't know what this had to do with the story I was just telling. I can't remember why I got into that. But it's somewhat like that, you know. I think I think football, for instance, would be a lot more interesting if if a player got hurt. Uh, what was that? If 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 it, if it got it got hit on the uh, hurt on the on the on the field and bad enough, I think they should just shoot him. You know, I think that would be really make the sport interesting. Football. Yeah, but fo football is so boring to go live to now because they have so many commercials and. You'll see the players like the kickoff. The kickoff happens and they go to commercial, and so the players come on the field and they just stand in there. Really? And you're like, what's going on? And they stand like for two minutes, and then they start playing, and then they, something else happens in a little bit longer. They stop. They're just standing there for like two minutes, no yeah. timeout. They're just waiting for yeah. a TV timeout. That one, and then the, the other thing that kills me live is, I love watching basketball live, but I hate the people around me because you'll have people behind you. I've had so many times. And there's two guys there coming from work, and they go to the, the Warriors games, and they're sitting there chit-chatting all through the game while the game's going on. Oh, my God. It's so, so, so frustrating. Yeah, well. Fine, see, I don't, ha I don't have to put up with that because I don't go to these games, okay? <laughs> Hold it. I, I suppose I'm the only one here who doesn't care about sports. Huh? Mm. You don't care? I don't care about them either. Okay. Yeah. If well, they stop the, you know, uh, football, I think everybody would be a lot happier. Well, you um, know, let, that, let's be honest. That may be Charlie. Let's be honest with something about, about football and, and sports like football. Why do they exist? Money, money, betting, money, betting, money. Betting, money, betting, money. betting, <laughs> betting, betting, and more betting. And uh, if the networks didn't carry them anymore, boy, you know, would they be in trouble. Because people couldn't bet anymore. You know, so that's the reason why it exists for the betting. I mean, and then you've got all these ads. I love them for these these things like uh, what, what, what are some of the uh, betting uh, sites? You know, um, DraftKings. Good example, yeah. DraftKings. And that what they do is they run these ads for DraftKings with all these beautiful women on there saying, "Come on, bet, spend your money. Come on, let's do some betting." And by the way. Bet responsibly. Yeah, if you have a betting problem, please call one eight hundred. No more bet. Yeah. yeah. Well, like, yeah, some guy's gonna go. You know, I'll bet two dollars on this. Well, I lost. Okay, I'm through. Come they on. Do the same thing with alcohol too. They really, yeah, drink responsibly. Yeah. yeah. But here, get high on our booze. You know. Yeah. Um, but I mean, they do, and you know why they have those ads? Because they don't want to get sued. They want to say, oh, we did a responsible thing. We told people they have a, a betting problem. Just call us up. Okay, I got a betting problem, and I just lost $5,000 on your lousy DraftKings. Could you help me by paying it back? You know, nope. I mean, nothing like that. Right. I think they say there's nobody calling, so it must be no problem. Yeah. By the way, can I show you something so disgusting, so vile, I don't think anybody's going to vomit from this, but they're going to find it vile. Not Phil in his underwear again. No. Is it, where's, where's Phil in his yeah. underwear? You can zoom Jack's up show, yourself? I guess. On Jack's show? Yeah. yeah. He's going on Jack's show in his underwear? He did One time once, he did. Yeah. I guess he had to find some place to call because he doesn't want to call me anymore. <laughs> you know. Anyway. You gonna zoom bomb yourself? No, I'm gonna show you what's so <laughs> so disgusting. I like uh, this brand here, Ice. Where is it? 
where is it? There it is, ice. You know, mm -hmm. I like it. Sparkling. It's a sparkling water, yeah. and it's flavored. Yeah, I like it. It's got a little flavor in it. It's zero calories, so it doesn't. The flavors aren't uh, aren't created so that they cause uh, calorie problems. Well, there's one flavor they have here, and it's called peach nectar. Mm. And I uh, I pulled out one the other day, and I'm starting to drink it, and then all of a sudden I notice something, and I want to show it to you. And I think you'll notice it on camera here. Let me, there we go. See the top? Yeah, yeah it looks like a plastic cap. It looks like it's plastic, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Let me just put my finger in there for a second and rub my finger th around it oh, here. No. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm getting to, going to get to here in a second. Let me just do this and, uh, well, it's not as bad as it was the other day. Let me see here. I've got a there we go. There we go. I'm sure that'll do it. Yeah. yeah. Look at my finger. Uh, yeah. Uh, See, that's kind of residue at the top of the. Yeah, uh, but box. that, but that's a really disgusting residue. It's not even the color of this. Set, it's like sat for a while. Hmm. It sat. Well, no. It. I wish I could say that it sat for a while, but every time I've opened a bottle of this peach flavor, that's what I get. None of the other flavors do that. Always there. Apparently, there's something in the in the mixture here, or something. <laughs> and look at that. Yeah, it comes off on my on my paper. F D N C red <laughs> and huh? yellow. Yeah, yeah, and I I don't know Food if I should be drinking that. Do you think that would hurt me? Is the whole bottle uh, plastic? Yeah, the whole bottle's plastic. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Tom, the bottom bottle is is got. Glass. The reason I buy it, Tom, is because I I hate our oceans. So uh, I, you know, <laughs> we could go go swim in the Pacific, and you could get it out again. Really? Yeah. <laughs> you know, the, we have a new job for you, Tom. Couldn't they? Couldn't they make these things dissolvable? Couldn't they? You know, do they have to be something when you throw in the ocean? They like become a whole island unto themselves. New continent. Make them, make them out of gelatin like they do for pill capsules. No, but if you did that, uh, the liquid in it would dissolve the the uh, the bottle. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's yeah. the problem. I was thinking the same thing. Why not make a dissolvable bottle? Now, maybe you could make a bottle that dissolves in, say, <clears throat> alcohol or some kind of something and just dissolves into water. Right. Yeah. Or you could use aluminum like I do with my spin drift and... Uh, Aluminum is highly recyclable. R aluminum is? Because I thought aluminum wasn't. Yeah. Oh, yes. Really? No. Sure, that's why you get so much money for it. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, 90, yeah, 95 percent aluminum. Yeah, spin drift comes, in, yeah, spin drift comes in aluminum cans. There's only one problem with, uh, with, with aluminum cans. Once you open them, you can't close them and then reuse them later. Like I keep this for maybe a day on my bedside, you know, until I've dr had a drink of it all. But so how I, do they make how do they make those little uh, detergent things that have the liquid in there, and and when you put them in the water, they dissolve. There's something in that detergent. Well, no water dissolves it. Yeah, it's water. Well, yeah, but well, you don't want you don't want wa liquid dissolving this no, because when I get I it, know. there'd be nothing but liquid at the bottom of the case, you know. So that doesn't work. But anyway, Tom's it, Tom's kind of young. He doesn't remember going to the beach before plastic bottles came out and seeing all the aluminum cans all over the beach. Well, I, I'm thinking of, I'm thinking of writing ice and just saying, you know, this this residue is disgusting. You know, uh, why don't you do something about it? But you know, I oh hi Adrian, yeah. how you doing, kiddo? There she goes. She's disappearing now. I said. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now you come yeah. out here soon, Alex, because she's even nicer in person. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. She was at our our, our get together meal a couple weeks mm -hmm. ago, and she's okay. very okay. Well, I don't want to talk. I don't want to talk about that. Anyway, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh my! My God. bad. Sorry. <laughs> Oh, he'll always he'll whenever you have a chance, you'll bring up something that's you know. No, I forgot about that. You're the only why one. Can we, wait, wait, why can't we bring up? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Someone mad that we went to lunch? 
Darn it. No. So that that lunch. So just just to say, because I I know I heard you guys talk about it before. So just just for the record, Steve Fox and I were the ones that were meeting up together because we're gonna like you know play cars with each other, you know, mm-hmm. show each other the car. And then then somehow we say we'll see if Phil and Alan want to go, and that's it, and that that's what happened. So it gave it gave you an opportunity to take a picture of my van and then turn it into a a scenario the next morning, which was really funny. <laughs> Yeah, well, I don't know. I mean, call me, call me. I don't know. Uh, uh, I don't know what the word is here, but prude. Pr- prude? No, it wouldn't be a prude. <laughs> what would you call it? I don't think it was out of malice. I think. Phil's well, no, like, I do. I do. I you you okay. you don't know Phil as well as I do. I think it was. Really? Yeah. I, I think I saw it subconsciously. That's what was in his head, and I I took it that way. You know. <laughs> And uh, uh, and plus the fact, what do I care about Phil? He doesn't call this show anymore. He'll call Jack's, but he won't call he's mine. He, he you know, the he he's got time to call anymore. Jack's show. What? He says the reason he doesn't call the show anymore is he's tired of people saying that he talks over people. Well, he does. <laughs> he even, he even I mean, does come it on. on the telephone when we talk. What? When we talk, he does it on the telephone. Yeah. Every day. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't want to talk about Phil when he's not here, but he's never going to be. He's tonight. never going to be here, so I suppose it's good to talk about him because he's never n- n- never going to call the show. What? Did you watch the debate tonight? Oh, wait a minute, hold on a second, Tom. Did you? Yeah, oh. I was just say, oh, baby. Yeah, I like to I like to bring up a subject of a possible uh, get together, um, and that is uh, Buddy Love is going to be doing his Christmas show uh, again this year at the. Uh, at the chapel in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's going to be on the Saturday before Christmas, the 23rd. And I went a couple years ago. I will, well, actually, several years ago, I went by myself. It was a great show. I had fun. And I was just wondering if there's anybody uh, on the panel or listening that would like to go uh, to this year's show. Uh, we could make it a get together. Hey, Jeff, you want to go? I'm just- Gonna fly right over. <laughs> Great. Terrific. Come on out. Anyway, uh, let me give. Can I give my email address and anybody that's interested can, can sure, let me know. Sure. Also, if you don't mind people writing you who you know, don't even know, but go right. ahead. Well, I wouldn't I do mean, it. Over the the well, time. no, he, you can give yeah. it if you don't mind getting a whole bunch of spam from people. You know. Well, I get spam anyway. Uh, so, the uh, email address is Tom Yamaguchi. That's T O M. Y A M A G U C H I mm-hmm. at Mac.com. That's M A C dot com. Mm-hmm. And if you're interested uh, in going to see uh, Buddy Love, we'll 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 meet there at the at the chapel, which oh, used okay. to be my uh, which used to be my college. Okay. <laughs> when is it, Tom? When is it? It's the twenty third. Yeah. It's actually a very it's actually a very good show. Yeah. It's good. a great show. Yeah. He, yeah. He's he's a great performer. Yeah, I've seen him several times with Alex's stuff. So. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Let me know. Um, let me see here. Oh, I got a couple of things. I got one thing here. Every now and then but, I see something. But if, if if we go, uh, don't don't send him a picture. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's okay. That's okay. Uh, well, you know, I mean, uh, let's face it. Uh, Phil doesn't call this program. He so, would yeah. rather go on Jack's show. But he somehow that's easy. And what, by the way, he's in, going to interrupt people on Jack's show, so it doesn't really matter, you know. Anyway, I saw this today, restaurants. Two things. In the second lawsuit of its kind, second lawsuit of its kind, a family says a man died after drinking Panera's caffeinated lemonade. And that's who make that makes that stuff that you drink. The uh, no, 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 no. Panera lemonade. Anybody go to Panera? Yeah, yeah. sometimes yeah. a lot. Yeah, uh, yeah. work work gets this stuff a lot. Yeah, well, they have good sandwiches. And if stuff. you don't like people who work with you, order the lemonade, the caffeinated lemonade. Great advice. Yeah, I, I ha- just drink Dr Pepper, so I, I never have to worry about. You that. know what? I I don't think they're going to win this suit. I think the caffeinated lemonade, it's caffeinated. They say it's caffeinated. Some people don't tolerate caffeine very well, but I doubt if the caffeinated lemonade killed him. 
I think what killed him was Panera's sandwiches. That's what I think <laughs> killed him. <laughs> anyway, Some and... Some people will sue for any stupid reason. Well, this is the second suit of its kind. I remember another one of these. And I don't know if it's gone to court yet. Apparently it hasn't. Otherwise, or if it has gone and they found them guilty of it, then this that's the reason this person's suing. But you got to die first before you collect, so it's not a... <laughs> It's not a good deal. And a woman who threw a burrito bowl at a Chipotle worker, which I think is justified homicide. <laughs> well, it's assault with a deadly weapon. Yes, definitely. Yeah. definitely. Self-defense. Yeah. Self-defense, yeah. Uh, worker, he was sentenced to work at a fast food job to avoid further jail time. Yep. Yep. What do you mean? Do you know this story? Yeah, I, I was watching the story earlier today. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. I mean, the judge said that she needs to have some kind of uh, empathy toward the uh, towards the fast toward... food workers, and so he's going to make her work fast food for two months. But this is Chipotle, okay? <laughs> yeah, really. Most people take a baseball bat in and hit the people in Chipotle. I mean, I've never gone to Chipotle. Marjorie used to go occasionally, and she said it was really mediocre. Very. You know? And <laughs> watery. Somebody says it's watery? That I, that I, I don't know. But anyway. So. Stay out of the bathroom. So that's, that's our food uh, for tonight, and I hope you enjoyed it, and thank you for being here. Good night, everybody. Well, anyway. Good night. Where are we? So, anyway. Have you, uh, Alex, by the way, have you heard, good night, everybody, have you heard that Jack Bishop is done? Is done? Yeah. He called me tonight and said he's not on the show. What are you and Amy, me and Amy, going to do for the show? What? You know really? something? I wish he'd call me and tell me that. <laughs> <Yeah>. Right. <laughs> you know, I wish yeah, he'd I inform me. That. After all, it's my little network, and I have to know what's going on. Yeah, I don't understand why he calls. You know, he texts me, and then I called him, and he and he calls me back. And what are you and Amy going to do for the show? I'm not doing the show anymore. I'm like, does Alex know this? Well, I'm going to let him know. Oh yeah. Well, when yeah. it's it's when. It's, <laughs> when? You know, you should let me know before, uh, before we go on the, you yeah. know, before we close yeah. this show off. Yep. You know. Well. No, you know what happened. Okay, I'll tell you what happened. Okay. Last night, two nights ago, I get a note from him that says, "I after he did the show, I can't find the file." All right. So I didn't answer the message because I'm just tired of having to help him every single night. This has been going on for weeks now. Every night I've had to put out a fire for him. And as long as I keep putting out fires for him, he's not going to put out the fire himself. Okay? Oh, I can't find this. I'll tell Alex I can't find it. Let him find it. You know, I've got other things to do, like go to sleep. That might be one possibility. Take you know. a dump. That would be yeah. a take a dump. That's another possibility. Yeah. So this happened. Uh, what was it on f Monday night? He can't find the file, so I don't reply to him. And about a half hour after the show was over, I can go onto his machine and look at his stuff, and I immediately found the file exactly where it's supposed to be, and I drew, put it, you know, <laughs> dragged it down, put it up on here, and then put it up on the. Uh, shows, you know, the uh, uh, on-demand thing, and a few other things, places I have to place it, like on the network and so on and so forth. Last night, I get a message from him. I can't, be, I can't make Zoom work. I can't, uh, excuse me, I can't make Skype work. I can't make uh, 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 butt, which is the encoder work. I can't, he can't make his butt work. Uh, and I can't, uh, what was the other one? Oh, I, and we have a thing called Remote PC that goes to my mach the machine here that serves the programs, okay? Um, and so he says, I can't get any of those to work. And I just didn't even answer the call. I just didn't want, I didn't want to know from it. I didn't want to understand what was going on. I mean, you know, he's going to want me to fix it again. And my feeling is, hey, Figure it out for yourself. It's a simple fix. So anyway, about half hour later, when he wasn't looking, I guess, 
I went onto his machine and tried each and every one of those things, and they all worked. What had happened was, I don't know what happened. Maybe the internet was down momentarily or whatever. And as soon as he can't do it, it's immediately, I can't do it. Alex, you do it for me. You know, and I'm, I'm not here to do that. I mean, and for years he was able to do all of this without any problems. And I think he has certain, what could we call it? Uh, I'm, uh, abilities. I, uh, huh? Limits. Uh, diminished Limits. abilities that is causing yeah. him to not be able to comprehend how these things work. I mean, they all work very simply. He worked, did them for seven years, Maybe. for the most part, without a hitch. In the beginning, I had to teach him how to do it, but after I got him teaching how to do it, he was fine. All of a sudden, after he got really ill, um, you know, he started having problems where I had to answer it every night. And now it's let, let, uh, Amy do the show? Now, I am I was very happy when Amy did the well, show. I can show you the text. It says, that, what are you and Amy going to do with the show? He sent it to me this morning. Yeah, well, it I isn't mean, Amy's job to do the show. A Amy, also, Amy, Amy also has a life, okay? Right. You know? Right. Um, and, and the fact that I'm not even being told that he's not going to do a show tonight? I wouldn't know. I don't. I don't see any messages here that tell me that. And don't bother sending me one now. Uh, 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 <laughs> you know, Jack. He, the reason he isn't going to do a show tonight is he can't figure out how to make that those things work. Right. You know, and it's a very simple thing. I mean, hell, I could teach you in a couple of minutes. You know. So, anyway, I mean. I mean, she last night Amy saw that there wasn't a show, so she did a show. I didn't know about it, so I couldn't post it and all of that. But I talked to her today. Wait, yeah. What? I didn't do a show last night. No. He called me ten times while I was umpire. <laughs> I can't answer the phone while I'm umpire. But he I, call after call from Gavin. He was Lyle trying to find out what time to do the show, Charlie. <laughs> Your fault, Charlie. Now you quit. You should have picked up. Well, you know, well, I also feel sorry for you guys who, who have stuck with him all these years. It's kind of like he's giving up on you, you yep. know? And, yep. and uh, uh, ultimately, I mean, you know why I keep, one of the reasons I keep doing this? For Tony. He's okay. our, yes. he's our. He, yeah, I mean, I would miss you, Alex. No, I would. He, I still think of that. He, 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 he's our poster child. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah, I'm adopted. Yeah. Please. I'm reading it, and I was please, just watching. Please listen, 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 going on. listen to this program so that Tony <laughs> won't, yeah. Yeah, will have My something brother, to do with you, his Alex. pathetic <laughs> little life. You know. Exactly. But yeah. no, I mean, I I do I it. Mean, I, I do I, it because you guys seem to enjoy it. I do enjoy it. I enjoy you guys and and a lot and women who call occasionally. Uh, and I, I enjoy it, so I, you know, that's why I do it. Uh, I'm doing it for you. I'm doing it for the audience. Uh, I'm doing it, additionally, for me. But I don't. That's not the main reason. I'm not doing it for me. I never did radio for me. I do it for the audience. You know. So anyway, uh, I just, you know, I and and I just feel there's a complete lack of respect that I get when I don't even get. He's telling you. You know, oh, well, I'm not doing the show anymore. Amy and you are going to do the show. Well, number one, uh, I, you know, of course, I don't mind Amy doing the show when he's not there. But is it his job to program this network and decide what the shows are going to be? And, you know, that Amy has suddenly got a show. Uh, and, you know, quite frankly, she was so good at it that I wouldn't mind her doing it every night. But I don't think she wants to. I don't think she wants to. You know, so... Anyway, I'm very surprised at that. But anyway, but last night was just a, a, a hoot because the machine, everything worked. Everything worked. He could have done a show last night, but he just gave up because why? Alex will bail me out. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, geez. Give me Tony's number if, for text. And if well, I, he call me, I, I'll, I'll speak to him. He called me one time. And I, well, well, he, yeah, should, he should call you and, and get permission to not do the show tonight then. Uh, you know, I mean, I, mean, I talked to him. I was talking, I was helping him once. I felt bad for him. He was, he was doing good, but it's, I think he was a little ill at the time. Well, I've stuck with him. Yeah. He's been, he's a he has not been well, and I've stuck with him, you know, yeah. I've through thick yeah. and thin. 
you know, and the fact that he respects me so little that he doesn't even let me know what he'd say to me what he said to to Jack, uh, not to Jack, to, uh, oh boy, uh, to Alan, Alan. Uh, you know, uh, that, that really bothers me, you know. Would you give Alan a, sh- a shot, Alex, or no? Never. Never. Really? No. He might be okay. He what do you mean? mean, what do you mean? If, if you got this no, idea that anybody is. can do a show, I mean, to begin with, no, but uh, J- I was just... Jack is a seasoned professional, okay? I am a seasoned professional. Oh, I know that. Yeah, I'm just okay. saying like off the cuff though. No good. Alan, what's your what you what have you done in radio? Zero. Okay, so there's your answer <laughs> right there. I don't maybe have You think it's that easy? You want to do it? I'll just no, sit no. back. You can finish. do it. I you can, like, listen you can host the show. I'll sit back here and let's let's listen to help, Tony. That would be it. I would get you notes and stuff like that. <laughs> listen to no. Tony host the show. What yeah. are we going to talk about, Alex? He said, get rid of him already. Coffee first. Oh, you know what I'm hmm? Give him some coffee and he'll host his own show. I actually got coffee. I get you coffee for you, Alex. What do you want to eat? Oh, oh you know what I was going to tell you, Alex? I, I was going to ask this to you. Hmm. My brother was so disgusted because he was watching that Sean Hannity with Trump. Hmm. We wanted to break the TV set, I'm telling you. He was basically calling Biden incompetent, and he's going right along for the ride. I mean, I can't get over this nonsense now. Well, you know what bothers me about, I, I saw a little bit of that where, where, I, I was so where Trump, said, Trump said he was going to be a dictator from day one. Yeah. He, that wasn't exactly what he said. He said, on day one, I will be a dictator. He said, after that, yeah. I won't be, basically. But still, even indicating that for one day, you're going to be a dictator. As a matter of fact, in the history of dictators, they usually are a dictator for one day, and then all of a sudden they get the army together and they stay dictator forever. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I couldn't believe what I was watching. It's like, you know, it's just... I can't believe like they, him even saying that in an election year. Yeah, it's like, it's like it's, I was going to tell you, it's bizarro world. And you're hey, watching hey, it. vote for me, I'll be a dictator. What? Vote for me, I'm going to get even with my enemies. That's what all his speeches are about. There are no speeches about... Yeah, it's like he's got scores to settle. No, like, he, he, yeah, yeah, but he has, in all his speeches, he never talks about what he's going to do for America. What, he's, what his new plan for America it would be in his, in his next term if he was elected. Instead, it's all the people yeah, he's going to get there. even with. And, you know, I mean, come on, folks. I mean, is, are you so moronic you're going to vote for this guy? Well, if you are, I got some really under, under swamp land out in a Jersey that I'll sell you. You know, yeah. I mean, it's amazing. He's it's just take amazing. away our health insurance. Yeah. What? He wants to take away our health he insurance. He wants to stop the affair. Yeah, day one, he's going to get rid of Obamacare. Well, don't worry, my union, one, my, my union, my union did the same thing to me. So you know. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, it's just it's, uh, it's saying that, just just saying that. Even if you believe that, saying it when yeah, you're running for say, president, like, what do you make it? Like, what? I couldn't believe what I was watching. And it's like, what am I? And Hannity's sitting there with his mouth open, like, yeah, you're right. Like, what is he talking well, about? Well, I here? actually believe that given enough time, Trump is going to do something, which is just a colossal gaffe. Okay. I, I really think so. I think that he's he's ready to make the major mistake because what's happened is he's starting mm. to live in this crazy world. He's going nuts, and he's beginning to believe he can get away with anything. This is just an example of it. Hey, I'll say I'll be be a dictator, and everybody will still vote for me. And I'll yeah, be, it was like so flabbergasted when he was saying it. Was like, it isn't like what? this morning because he said that last night. Uh, his numbers have suddenly precipitously tanked. You know. There for another eight days. Well, anyway, so. Somebody's I, going somewhere. <laughs> what? I hear somebody's going for eight days somewhere. <laughs> yeah. I hope the drunk goes in the clink. Yeah. But. I mean, I just couldn't get over that. Like, you know, Alex, did you ever think you'd see, like, in an election year coming up, any of this? Is this like dwarfing Nixon on every level and Watergate and all this? Is, is it even Nixon make, is was it an, even... Nixon was an entirely different situation to begin with. With Nixon, you had a guy who, in spite of everything we hated about Nixon, did have a respect for the office and for the Constitution 
and for the United States. It's just that he couldn't help himself when it came to breaking into like the Democratic uh, Committee to see what they had on him. Yeah, you know, it's the same thing he did when he was in college. The the couple of days before he was ready to uh, uh, graduate, he snuck mm. into the dean's office late at night to find out what his standing was in his oh. class. And it turned out he was number one in his class. So well, he was pretty smart. Well, as soon as they caught him doing that, because somebody came in and caught him doing it, they almost didn't let him graduate. <laughs> so this was just a, was a, the first sign of Nixon defeating himself. And he did the same thing here. He was a shoe-in to be president no, again. But he had to have the, somebody the go into, into, um, uh, uh, into the committee and break into the committee and yeah, and yeah. and see what kind of information they had on him. So, hey, uh, 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 Kevin, yeah. Kevin, would you just turn off your mic while you're talking? Yeah, because we're finding out all about your vacation. Yeah. Oh, okay. Swingers vacation. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so I mean that that that, that that's a trouble. Sorry, <laughs> it's not a vacation. Oh well, fu it ended with fuck, so it doesn't sound like it was a vacation. <laughs> no, we're trying to figure out logistics for the Fiesta Bowl. I just got a notice of for my daughter what they're doing for the Fiesta Bowl. And it's like, oh shit! Isn't that isn't that a a, a, a dish at Chipotle? It's football. Isn't that Chipotle? <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> This is a Chipotle Fiesta dish, you know, come on. A bowl, yeah. rather. Um, yeah, it's kind of screwing up her going back to school. It's like there's a seven-day gap. We got to get her back up to Eugene. Then she's got to go to Arizona. And then she comes back, and there's like a seven-day wow. gap, and we got to figure out that seven-day gap. What instrument does she play again? The alto sax. The alto sax. Oh, yeah, she's, mm -hmm. she's Lisa Simpson. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so you know, I mean, uh, uh, even Nixon had a, had a respect, you know, for the Constitution in the United States, and you know the position that he had. It's just that he had this also overwhelming desire to defeat himself. You know, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. He must have been paranoid. Then, oh, God. he was. He was very. Paranoid. I could see him. It was either he probably taping everything all the time. Yeah, you think sure. He taped his own office, and when people were coming, he probably did do something like that. Oh yeah, yeah. So anyway, no, oh, what the hell? Uh, I mean, have I got Nixon wrong, Tom, or was I right about oh, no, Nixon? No, no, yeah. no. I'm just thinking. I was just remembering what uh, Bob Woodward reported that during the the final days. Actually, that was the book. Uh, the final days, he was walking around the White House talking to the pictures. Yes, <laughs> yes. He was. Yeah. He was. He was very paranoid. <laughs> yeah, and people, you know, I mean, we. Uh, but this president, I think, uh, to begin with, I think this guy's crazy. I think he's going, going, going more and more nuts every day. Yeah. You know, uh, the fact that he lost drove him. Yeah, you're right. Off. He can't get. Do you think he realizes he lost Alex, and they just won't admit it, or you think it's just his, like, you know, he can never I, be. I, I, part of him, I think, doesn't want to believe he lost, and part of him definitely knows he did. <laughs> you know. Um, if you thought you you were cheated out of the presidency, let's say, well, not you, you'd never get to oh, that point. I was going to say that. Uh, really, yeah, that would be really. a sad sad moment for our country if you were got the nomination for president. I have my I have my button on the Nintendo Switch. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but you know, I mean, if you if it happened to you. Uh, mm. You would just say, "Well, I'll wait for another four years, and then I'll try again." And you wouldn't—you just let it happen, you know. Mm -hmm. You can feel whatever you feel, and you can feel resentment for it. But you can get even in four years by running again and getting the presidency back. Uh, but no, that isn't Trump. He just wants it handed to him on a platter. You know, I deserve it. I didn't lose. Give it to me. Yeah, like that's going to happen. You know, just uh, flies in the face of all that we believe this country to be, and that's sad. Uh, what can I ask you guys? You you've been seeing, I'm sure, on television, what's been happening in uh, in Gaza. Uh, are you not disgusted by that? Yeah, I'm getting tired of the uh, 
Hamas lobbing missiles into Israel. Oh, really? They're still doing it. Yeah, how many? (laughs) And Israel's got an iron dome and manages to take care of all of them. Okay, well... You know, still, still cluster bombing the whole Gaza. Yeah, but the cluster bombing of Gaza. Here's what what got me the other day. They said to all the people in southern Gaza, or, or everybody in northern Gaza, go to southern Gaza. So all the people in northern Gaza attempted to go to southern Gaza, right? And then the Israelis bombed the hell out of southern, southern Gaza. Gaza. It's like. Okay, I'll go down here so we'll know where you are and then we'll bomb the crap out of you. Yeah. I mean, it's some horrible stuff that's going on here. I mean, I hate to say this, but I'm beginning to think of Netanyahu as the modern day Hitler. You know, and I know that's a terrible thing to say, but, and believe me, the people in Israel are not happy with Netanyahu. Especially, and I saw tonight that the released hostages had a meeting with him and started yelling at him. You know, why didn't you take care of this faster? Why didn't you make a deal earlier? Why didn't you stop everything and try and get us out? You put us in harm's way. They were yelling at him. Uh, So I'm not the only one that doesn't like Netanyahu, you know? Netanyahu and Trump came from the same parents. Well, I mean, it's terrible. It's just terrible. And it's terrible what's happening there. It is, on one level, it's genocide. And say what you will about Hamas. They're terrible. They're horrible. What they did to Israel was just disgusting and, without question, uh, uh, a horrible thing. But, come on. What do you, you you know, they've killed something like 13 members of Hamas so far and 10,000 Palestinians. That's up to You can look at it like... Huh? You can look at it like if Trump was handling this whole situation, you'd probably do it the same damn way. Well, yes. Like I, an idiot. <laughs> like I don't, idiot. you know, I don't know how Trump would be handling this or Ukraine. Probably crank. just the same way, like an idiot. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, I think that our president, I think, should probably put the hammer down and say, look, you know, we, we, we want to support Israel, but we can't support you in this genocide that you're managing to accomplish in Gaza. And then... Uh, what's his name? Netanyahu has pretty much said, once we win this thing, we're going to run Gaza. Yeah. Well, isn't that the taking over of another country? You know? I mean, it's just, it's horrible. And the Palestinians don't deserve this. The uh, the Palestinian people have had enough problems over the years without this. Now, anybody disagree with me? Come on. Mm. I don't disagree with you. I just say it's just it's just an ugly situation all the way around. Oh, yeah. uh, absolutely. It's, it's the it's, it's, it's just it's really difficult, and especially you know, uh, here in Berkeley, um, we've had about every city council meeting in the last month has gotten shot you know, shut down basically by a very vocal group of protesters yeah, trying to get that. the city to. Uh, pass a ceasefire resolution and uh you know it's it's just it's ugly it's ugly the way they conduct themselves i mean even though i'm a person who supports a ceasefire well here here's a, here's the stupidity and, and, yeah. and you know and, and you know i i really what what we women we lost your voice we, 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 we lost your mic we lost, lost your, your audio, mic. Tom. You lost your audio. I think you may have touched your audio button. Hold on a second. Let me send him a little thing here so that he. Uh, this, let me see here. Uh, it says your internet connection's unstable in the middle of my screen. Really? Yeah, I'm not getting that probably here. On Comcast is what that probably means. Yeah. Let me see here. Uh, let me see here. Harris are winning. Up, 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 up. Put my pen chat. It says my internet connection. There you go. There you are. There, there. You're fine now. You're fine. Okay. I should have a good connection. I've got my own internet now. I know. I know. I've got my own. My phone's right here next to me. Yeah. But anyway, finish what you were saying. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, so so as I said, the the, the uh, this group of many of them are UC Berkeley students, 
have been shutting down the city council. Are they are they pro Israel or pro Palestinian, or are they both pro Palestinian? Yeah, and there have been a few people who have showed up with Israeli flags and try, you know, and and been, as you know, be pro Israel. It has just gotten so ugly. And I was just going to say that there's this fine line between, you know, to say yes, I'm pro Palestinian, but you know, or I'm anti Israel, but I'm not anti Semitic. But the well, way I, people I, start I think talking, if, yeah, I think if you when listened, people start talking, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. that 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 any Semitism really leaks in there, and I, I, it really makes me, it really bothers me. Well, I think if you've listened to me over the years, occasionally you've heard me actually go into my whole feeling about Israel. Oh yes, I and do. my the great and, fear, my great fear about Israel is, I said, I'm a Jew, and one day. Mm-hmm. Israel, which calls itself a Jewish nation, which is not right. It's a Zionist nation, and it is a, it is it's Israeli. It's it, it, and the people who live there are Israelis. I am a Jew. I live in the United States. I was born and raised here. I'm an American Jew. I am not an Israeli. And I said one day, Israel, because it's a country and it's a political entity, is going to do something disastrously wrong. And then I, as a Jew in America. I'm going to be blamed for that, and we're going to see a big rash of anti-Semitism in this country. I called it absolutely right. That's exactly what's happening, you know. Mm-hmm. And and I, please don't associate me with Israel. I don't want to be associated with their politics. I think they're really screwed lately. Uh, yeah. But uh, and don't think that I am anti-Semitic. I can't be. I'm Jewish, you know. Yeah. Don't think I'm anti-Semitic because I'm pro-Palestinian. I've always been pro-Palestinian. And a number of Jewish uh, residents have, have spoken, say, you know, say I, I, you know, I am anti-Israel. I'm, I'm anti-Zionism. You know. Yeah, yeah. And and I can understand that, but but as I said, there's a fine line. You know and, something? And I got to tell. There's an argument to be made for the fact that people who have been oppressed, as the Jews were during World War II. And, uh, you know, eventually, if they, in this case, have taken on a nation after many, many years, take on the, how can we call it, the uh, the oh. clothing or the attitude of their oppressors because they saw that it worked, you oh. know, and that I think that this is what's happened. I mean, more and more, Netanyahu is acting like a Hitler. Okay, plain and simple. But he had that template to work from because this is somebody who managed to, you know, set asunder the whole race. And, and you see that your oppressor managed to oppress you. Now that you're free, eventually you kind of become oppressor of other people. Uh, it's very strange. I, I, I think if we look through history, it happens a lot. But I think that uh, if I were in Israel right now, I'd be fighting to get Netanyahu to get out of office, get somebody in there who wants to start solving this problem once and for all, and dis- and coming up with a solution in order well, to make two sure state, two state solution, two state yes. solution, and and do it in good faith, and make life and make it so that everybody in Israel is safe from this sort of thing because you're getting along with the other side. You know, and it can be done. Hamas is 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 simply a last ditch effort on the part of the Palestinians uh, to have somebody representing them who's hard ass. The only thing is they got too hard ass. Okay, mm-hmm. and 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 the Palestinians know that too. The Palestinians hate Hamas. Okay, mm-hmm. just like the Israelis are getting to hate Netanyahu. So mm-hmm. why not shut both those sides down? Get rid of Hamas and get rid of, 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 of Netanyahu and get all these people talking together and make that part of the world safe for the people who live there by getting along and figuring out how to solve this problem. You know? I and, don't know if there's anybody or any group who's been able to do that. No, they, it, nobody's been able to do that because nobody, everybody's been taking sides. You know, the United States for years has just been taking sides. And I've claimed for years that the reason America has taken sides on the uh, uh, taken sides with the uh, with the Israelis 
is because they believe an old anti-Semitic trope, and that is that the Jews have money. And they don't want to upset the Jews in America because they've got money. Well, we don't have money, you know? I'm not a rich Jew, and I'm, most of the Jews I know do not come under the classification of wealthy, but there is this trope, there is this myth, and it's an anti-Semitic myth that <coughs> Jews have money. And so therefore, they don't want to do anything to upset us. They think I'm gonna get upset if Biden says, hey, stop it, Israel. Quite frankly, I'd vote for him next time for sure, you know. Yeah. So anyway, I just I excuse me, but it's just been getting to me every time I see, you know, kids being having arms blown off and mm. you know killed and whole. I mean, what's left of Gaza? You know, it's just a dust bowl. That's all that's left. Do do the Palestinians deserve that? And 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 this is so you can get. 13 members of Hamas? Are you kidding me? I mean, yeah. yeah, it's overkill. It's overkill. Anyway, gee, I wonder if I were saying this and I really had a career if I wouldn't have one tomorrow. You know? Hey, uh, interesting. You think they let, right. would they let you, if, if you said this on the air, Alex, would they pull you aside after the show? I think they pull me off the air. Oh, really? Oh, oh, I yeah. don't think so. I think I so. I think yeah. so. No, I hear other other hosts that uh, express the same opinion. Really? Sure. Oh, oh they pull you into the office. I can say, hey, what, what's going on? You know. Once well, I've heard you that. Well, well they always on. used to call me into the office and ask me oh, what yeah? the hell's going on. So you know, <laughs> uh -oh. this would just be another day for me. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, but uh, uh, anyway, so you know, I just I just am tired of it. every night. I mean, and I see these yeah, kids. All that I see kids, you know, being pulled from the rubble and stuff like that, and your heart just goes out. And I think that, you know, Israel had the world on their side when this whole thing happened, you know? And mm -hmm. yet they handled it in a way that then turned the world against them. And, and Netanyahu should have been smarter than that, you know? <laughs> Everybody, go to the south because that's where we're going to bomb you next because we know you're all going to be down there. Wow. Oh, there was one other thing. They were sending out these leaflets, and they said, for further information on how to get south and how to get out of the way of all the bombs and everything, go on the internet and go to this website. They don't have any internet in Gaza any longer. <laughs> you can't even get a phone signal out of Gaza, okay? Thank you very much, but I mean, just, it's it's the fog of war, folks. It's the fog of war. And Tell them to release the hostages, and Israel will stop. Well, why don't you stop Israel, and they'll release the hostages, which is what they did while they stopped. That, but Hamas broke the agreement. I mean, Hamas did not break the agreement. Oh, even our president says he did. Well, the president doesn't know shit, okay? He's believing whatever Netanyahu told him because Jews have money. Okay. All right? I'm sorry. I, that's, uh, yeah. And Yahoo doesn't care about the hostages. That's why the hostages that got released are pissed off at them. Yeah, yeah. Now they're so. talking about flooding the tunnels with water. Yeah. Well, that makes. Well, then you'll drown all the uh, all the uh, hostages, won't you? Well, there's hostages that are down in the tunnel. Yeah, yeah. That's really smart. You know. That's what I'm saying. He doesn't care about this. Yeah. Well, anyway, I don't All know. All he cared about was getting revenge. Yeah. Listen, uh, thank you so much. I've had a nice, nice time tonight for the most part. The last <laughs> 10 minutes, I decided to bring this up because I didn't want to spoil the camaraderie through the rest of the show. And uh, Tom, good having you here. Always good having you here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and you've done it a couple of times in the last couple of weeks, and I really appreciate it. Alan. Hi. Thank Too bad you. we get a chance to talk about Norman Lear, but oh, I oh, forgot yeah. to mention Norman. Oh, yeah. Lear. yeah. Hey, listen, listen. He was 101. I'm not feeling sorry for him. I'm just saying you lived a great life. Zeit gesund, you know. Why? Why are we rushing? There's no show later. There's no Jack show. Well, we don't know if there's a Jack <laughs> show or not, and it might be. It might be Amy for all we know. Please stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen, for Radio Roulette. All right. <laughs>
<laughs> Thank you, Tom. You come back on. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. Thank you, uh, Alan. I appreciate it. Thank you to Charlie Wallace. Uh, Brian Neary. God, you know, we got had a few moments with Adrian, but she's getting too old to be part of this, right? Mm. Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> Kevin, thank you so very much for being here tonight. I hope you solve your problem with your daughter and how she's going to get from one place to another. Well, I got a few weeks. <laughs> okay. And uh, Jeff Stein, thank you, Jeffrey. I appreciate it. Tony, thank you. Good, good having you here. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a wave, a wave, beep, beep, blah, blah, a big wave goodbye at you. Okay. There they go, folks. There goes our citizen panel. Um, I don't know what's happening next. <laughs> I really don't have the faint, faintest clue because I have, but if uh, Amy's doing a show, fine. Uh, if uh, Jack's doing a show, fine. I just wish I knew. Anyway, I'll leave the network open for them for a little bit. In the meantime, as always, I will see you again tomorrow. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, you know, tell her I love her, okay? Bye, everybody. Mwah.